Mello, everyone, and welcome to my first ever sketchbook tour. Now, before we get started, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, first of all, thanks to everyone who follows me on any social media, be it Instagram, YouTube, Tumblr, Facebook, even though I don't post very much to pay, uh, Facebook. Did I say Facebook? Anyway, thank you guys. It really does mean a lot. And um, hope you'll stick with me. And yeah, thanks. Also, um, a good chunk of the pictures you'll see in this sketchbook you may or may have not have seen if you like I said if you follow me on Instagram and such but I guess what's different instead of just seeing the picture and you know having a little blurb in the description box is you actually hear the artist or, or you know I guess that's me in this case um, talk about it and what I was feeling at the time when I made this picture or why I wanted to make the picture in the first place and so have you but yo yo so without further ado let's get started alrighty looks my name on my youtube name my real name is not bad that would be crazy to see that on a birth certificate that would be fucking insane alright Alright, so yeah, I got this sketchbook um, around, oh, I guess I should explain that first. Yeah, I got this sketchbook probably like mid-2017, and um, if you can't already tell, it's Canson uh, Mixed Media uh, Notebook, or sketchbook, and um, I liked it. I mean, it was like five or six dollars. I think I got it at Michael's, yeah, mid September 17 and um, I was like cuz I would try to do like marker or and or watercolor paper on like I guess you could say regular drawing pad paper and it would just end up destroying the paper and the picture I was making I'm like, oh, I really need to pay attention to the paper types I'm getting and I noticed that I like to use lots of different like um, art mediums in the same picture and my good friend, he, um, he told me that I should get a mixed media notebook. And so, yeah, looked up in Michael's, saw the little tab, saw that it could handle pretty much anything. And picked it up and as you say, that's history. Oh, I'm glad I saved the little tabby thing. Um, yeah, it says mixed media. Oh, let me put it down. It has like 30 sheets, 5.5 inches by 8.5 inches. It is 224 grams. And it says right here, it's like in different languages. Heavyweight paper, fine and medium texture for dry and wet media. And it's um, already perforated. I think I said that right. So if you like want to tear out pages, I think I only tore out one. And that was when I was doing like a um, review of like, um, I think some art supplies from Wish, but haven't really torn out any pages out of this book. So yeah. Oh, oh okay. I don't know what that was, sorry. All right, now we can get into the book. I'm special, y'all. Y'all have to forgive me. All right. This is obviously the first picture I drew. Um, this was, like I said, when I first picked up this book in mid-2017. Um, Jeez. It's um, actually an original character by my good friend, Marcus. And... I 
actually drew this character before. Her name's Rhea. She's um vampire queen or the mother of the mother and vampire queen of all the vampires in you know his mythos that he made up. And I was like, well, I gotta like christen this book, so why not do a favorite character that I like to draw? Because I think I drew like three or four pictures of her. And um, this was actually for Inktober as well. Yeah, this was for Inktober. And I was just learning how to use like ink and how to do ink washes and stuff. And I think I did pretty well on this. Like how I um, made the skin, well how I rendered the skin and did her hair and stuff like that and gave it like a cool little a little background that looks like blood but it's like you know black and white because it's ink I guess I could have used red ink but I didn't have any at the time but yeah I think I used um of course like I said ink I think it was like Dr. Martin's ink or something or like speedball ink and I think I used some ink pens the little calligraphy dip pens and I think like a signal like little pen the white pens and like some white ink too and that was about it but yeah I had pretty much fun doing this it was probably one of my first pictures that I uploaded to Instagram too I think or like mid time when I started to use Instagram a lot but yeah that's it that's Rhea she's so pretty I like her a lot um moving on this is a picture from one of the kids I used to take care of at my job. Um, I don't want to say his name, you know, for privacy issues and stuff like that. But um, before he went away, he decided he wanted to sketch a little doodle. I have no idea what it is. I don't know. It looks like a cat, fish, like rocketeer, rocketeering off. I don't even know if I said that right speak like I'm from another country but I'm, I swear I'm, I'm here from the United States I speak English so yeah I have no idea what that is but he drew that for me and it's in this book and so it shall stay and it's just like a little memento because I really liked him he was a, he was a cool little kid I loved him a lot and I miss him because not only did he leave the school he moved out of state and I'm like well damn I'm definitely ain't gonna see you anymore. I mean, I guess I'll go to the state where he lives at, but yeah, but yeah, kind of bittersweet little picture right there. Um, this one was actually for Inktober as well. I, I don't know why I saw a picture of like, um, like jewelry and I'm like, oh, that'd be really cool to draw for Inktober. And so I did. I think I, you know, used some Micron, some Uniball pens, white and black, and did like a cool little inky wash, little background thingy. Even made, I was real happy with myself that I made like the little, the light and shadow um, reflect, reflection and refraction of the light on the ground as well. I mean, I know it's just like a small little picture, but I was happy with it and I still am. I know it's not the best, but it's mine. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> Moving right along. Alright, this one is actually one of my original characters, of course. Um, I named her Orleana. Um, I won't read this. If you want to read it, just pause the video and read it. It's probably like a ton of like spelling errors in it, so yeah, no, I'm not going to read it, but... Yeah, she's one of my original characters. She's like, you know, big, fat, heavyweight, whatever you want to say. You know, because we don't have like a lot of that. And you know, I mean, there are some that are like cropping up now, but for the most part, we don't really have like, I guess you could say, fat people in comic books. I don't know, I don't know how to say that, but I thought I would just, my attempt at making one. And if I ever get the function to get up and actually write the story or do the picture panels for this book that I want to do apparently <laughs> but I haven't 
actually done anything with it yet. But um, yeah. And poor Liana. You can see like different facial expressions. I even did like a little chibi thing. And I was pretty satisfied the way it's come out. But my handwriting is a little atrocious. Like I said, if you want to read it, good luck. I ain't reading it. Yeah. <laughs> This was when, um, I don't know, I woke up one Sunday morning and I was like, oh, I should just doodle something really quick. And I did this. It was, I think it was like the beginning of fall. So it's like fall being pictured. And I just, yeah, I used like various like oranges, pinks and stuff. I think these were the Prismacolor pencils. Yeah, I don't think I had the favorite Castell ones at the time. No, not not at this point in time and I just made this pretty little face with like fall light colors but her skin turned out to be pink which is weird because I don't like the color pink I hate the color pink but yeah did that picture but I mean it came out pretty well despite me because I was like after I finished like, oh this looks like wait it's pink automatic hate and so <laughs> But I don't hate it. It actually came out nice and it was just like a fun little thing to do. Um, this picture you may or may not recognize. I think I posted this on Instagram. I think I post, like I said, I think I post most of these on Instagram. But this one was like, um, I guess you could say like a test color picture of my picture, Spirit of the Forest. And um, my good friend Danny, she helped me think of a name for him. His, his name is um, Notch now, like, you know, a notch in a tree. And I thought it was so cute, and it to me it fits him so well. But yeah, um, before I actually, like, did the, the actual picture, I did, like, this, like, picture to, like, see how, it, like, the colors and, like, what he was going to be doing or wearing in the picture. And I really like how this came out, even though, you know, this wasn't like a finished like product or anything. It was just like a mock-up and I was just super excited to like finish the true picture. And yeah. Cause this doing like little mock-up sketches of like pieces that you wanna do helps. It definitely helps. I mean it, this helped me trem tremendously. It can help me pick out colors, pose, and how I want it, like lighting, composition, and stuff like that. I mean, the final product doesn't look too different from this. I think I changed like the hair and like the horn that sits on top of his head, and maybe a little bit of the jewelry, but everything else is pretty much the same. And yeah, just made that. I think I used, um, Combos, the water markers, or watercolor markers, or whatever you want to call them. Um, ink pens, Prismacolor, and I think um, Winter and News and like Cotman little watercolor set. And y'all did that. And make sure that's covered up because that is someone's personal information that I do not want to give out. But I'm gonna treat the sketchbook as an archive, so I won't erase it. You just you just won't see it. Um, this one pretty well. This whole book is near and dear to me. This one is especially special to me. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I guess you would get it. This um, is very special to me because a very nice young man came up to me at. Um, Altcon, well now it's known as Tallahassee Comic Cookbook Comic Book Convention. Jeez, I couldn't get that out. And he was like, "Oh, can you like draw me in like a superhero type pose and stuff like that?" And I was like, "Oh my gosh, yes, I can do that!" I was so happy because I don't know if anyone remember me saying on Sketch Talk Time that. You know that comic book convention I, you know I did really well despite having some really rocky starts at the beginning I ended up doing pretty well at that convention and this is like one of the highlights so um 
yeah, it was like a two-day convention. He came to me the first one. I ended up mailing the um, finished product to him. So yeah, I don't have the original of that anymore. I think I posted a picture on my Instagram. I'm not sure. I have to go back and look. I probably did. Um, but yeah, these were like uh, mock-up sketches of how I wanted like the product to look or his picture to look. And um, I guess he was a very big um, X-Men fan because he had on a shirt that says Mutant and Proud and it had like, you know, the X-Men logo on it. I don't think you can see it over here, but you can kind of see it right here. But just let me know that. I think I can turn it. Hold on. Let's see. You see, I know it's kind of small, but it's right there. Because he has his Mutant and Proud. And um, I just did like some quick poses of how he looked and like the little final piece. This is how the not exactly but this is the pose I ended up using instead of that one this one was okay but it was um, too static -y and not well I should say it wasn't as dynamic as this one and I ended up like mainly guided to and yeah it, it came out really well and um, ended up mailing it off and it was just it was just a happy time yay I sold, all, I sold like a lot of prints and I still have like a couple of prints left um, but I sold a lot of prints and I had um, basically two commissions because I did um, like a traditional piece and I did a digital piece to go along with it and let me see speaking of that oh yes there it is speaking of that let me see that on the camera this is how the digital piece looks. I mean, obviously, not exactly like, but this is how, like, the basic setup of how I wanted to do it. Because it was like the logo of his shirt, Mutant and Proud, and him, and um, sort of like the style of like a curatorium, you know, characters from like Dragon Ball Z, Goku, Vegeta, and stuff like that. But obviously, you know, he was a, a black person, so I had to like make adjustments. But it, it was a fun, it was a fun project to do. I really enjoyed that. And I was so happy and thankful that, you know, he chose me to do that for him. Yeah, just happy times. Yay. All right, moving right along. Let me adjust this back. Oh, really, AC? You want to do that to me right now? All right, excuse that noise it'll it should go off in a minute um next picture well, i guess like rotate it here anyway. um this was an ink wash picture that i did um i think that's what you would call it yeah an ink wash picture because all everything you see in this picture is made out of ink and i think i um at, yeah, I didn't make any outlines for this. I don't. I was just at work and I was bored, so I was like, yeah, let me just try to do some some experimenting. And um, I think I did this with with a Pentel Aquash pen with um, ink in it. And I just chose three random things that I wanted to do. Um, the first is like a picture of a mountain backdrop. I guess and um really happy the way um you know I, I rendered the sky and the clouds and like a little like open spots and it looks like sun rays are coming down out of the clouds and I guess like snow-capped mountains and um a little lake with like light reflecting off of it hence the, the white um ink little spots and stuff and the one on this side is just a picture of a koi fish. I saw a picture of one online, thought it looked cute, and I was like, hey, let me try my hand at drawing a fish. And it, I think it came out pretty well. I mean, it looks like a fish, and definitely looks like a koi fish, so yeah. And after I drew the fish, um, I actually went back and put like these little lines right here to give like his um, fins a little bit more definition. 
Cause yeah, at first I didn't line anything. I didn't line anything. I went actually went back and put lines and stuff. And the last one um, is a like I guess you could say like a space scape, like a landscape. So you say space scape. Um, I don't know if anyone's like a space buff. I, I guess I consider myself a space buff somewhat. Somewhat. I'm not into every little piece aspect of it but every once in a while I'll look up and just read some stuff and um oh yeah this is the New Horizons spacecraft if anyone's like I said pay, like I said pays attention to that stuff um flying past uh Pluto and one of Pluto's moon I believe it's Karen and um yeah, the New Horizons spacecraft leaving our solar system um, as it looks back and it sees our star, our sun right here. It's just a point of light at this perspective because if like you're way back in the back of the solar system, you know, like back of the bus, it's going to look like a just a bright dot to you. Of course, here on Earth, it's like a big brighter dot and it gives off lots of heat, but... I guess if you were at Pluto, you'd be like, uh, no, it's, I see it, but I definitely don't feel it, but yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I did that, and then after I finished everything, after I let it dry, um, I think I used some, what is it, the fine tech, like, the glitter, well, not the glitter, it's like the shiny, um, watercolor paints or inks. And I just kind of lightly went over some places with it. Um, I like how I did like the haze around Pluto. Like a, um, I think I went over it with like a white colored pencil. Just did like a little rubby rub haze around the planet. Well, it's actually that's its atmosphere, but yeah. And then of course I did like the the dark rocky texture somewhat. And then um. I like how um, I captured the moonrise on that one. And the little shiny sheen, sparkle sparkles with the sun really shining on the New Horizons spacecraft as it speeds away. But yeah, um, my feelings when I was making this picture was like, you know, thinking about, I guess you could say like, how life on Earth is and how it looks to us. But, um, I guess from the perspective of like a spacecraft, it's just like a little dot somewhere. Yeah, but it doesn't mean we're not beautiful in our own little crazy But yeah, that's my little blurb on that. But yeah, you see if I can orientate this back the way it is here. Uh, give me a second, please. Oh, jeez. Make sure. That's centered. Is that upside down? No, it's not. Oh yeah, I, w I just, I guess I was just in a, like a really, really cool, like space mood or something. Um, this one, this one's really, this one's really fun to make. It's, I could, I guess you could say it's a self-portrait. It's me, and um. If you know me in real life, I have an afro. Obviously, it's not that big, but that would be so freaking cool. I had an af afro that like shows like a spacecape. And um, let's see. Uh, like I said, I'm. I guess you could say I'm kinda a space buff, a, a little bit, a little bit. And um, I don't know if anyone can recognize any of the very spacecraft or vehicles in here. Um. This is the, the ISS, the International Space Station. Um, this is one of the Soyuz um, little capsules. Um, I believe that, yeah, that's um, Russian space vehicle, yeah. Um, this one was really exciting because I actually watched the, um, the live um, stream of this. This is the, um, the Orion space capsule that they tested, I think, back in 2014. And I believe this is the spacecraft that um, NASA is proposing to take people to Mars. So yeah, that's the um, the small little spacecraft right there. 
of course, um, horribly this but not forgotten space shuttle. Um, love the space shuttles. I even have like a little space shuttle plushie. I think I showed it to you guys before. And um, this one, let me see, let me remember. Oh, um, the European Space Agency launched back in 2006 or 2007. Um, um, a spacecraft called Rosetta and a little lander called Philae and um they made history I think this I think this was like the same year as when we were testing the Orion spacecraft either 2014 or 2015 one of those years the ESA made um history by successfully landing the, the little lander Philae on a comet without like it like destroying itself on impact and stuff. I mean that was the point of the mission to land like a, a soft touchdown on the comet and um, you know gather 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 data about it, you know water composition and the dust that accumulates and I guess the the scientists are trying to figure out like you know. Um, where does all this water come from in the universe and stuff and there I guess the best guess for them or well, I guess it wouldn't be a guess the best thing to you know how to answer go about answering that question is to study comets because they f orbit everywhere throughout the solar system and I guess there are like road comets that just fly out in the space regardless if it orbits in the star system or not I'm not sure but yeah they made history with that. Um, I remember watching the, the live stream of when Philae touched down and I saw like the, um, I guess like mission control, you know, they were like happy and cheering and stuff like that. Little funny story when the little lander landed, when Philae landed, um, it actually bounced a couple of feet and then it like at first like the little sensors were like knocked off and after a while I guess the sensors came back on and everything was okay like he didn't or it didn't uh, land in the exact spot where it was supposed to but everything turned out to be okay um and I want to say like a couple months after the landing or maybe a year after the landing um like I said you know when you're out in space you don't have like a power outlet so the little lander like ran out of power and then as it you know it orbited the system it got more energy from the sun's rays and um they were hoping that the lander would like you know come back online and it did and it started to send out you know data and information that the scientists were ready to collect and it was just a cool little moment but yeah um kind of went on a little um blurb about that uh, yeah but I just me really excited about learning stuff like that. And um down here, I don't know if you can tell, it's a space head like that. I did that with I think Sharpie and again the um what are those things called? Let me see, because I have them right here. The fine tech pearl colors, yeah. These are really cool. They're really freaking expensive. What? But yeah. Fine tech, the watercolor shiny thingies you can use, and I used it right here. And like I said, they're really expensive, but the colors are really pigmented, and they just came out so pretty and bright and vibrant. And I love this picture so much. And um, yeah, I think I did like a. I used like what did I use? Oh, like neon. Um, like pit like gel pens and stuff to give like the illusion of different stars of different colors and size and whatnot and um, after I finished everything I went over with like a light glaze of like one of the um, silver shiny watercolor paints or whatever and um, I don't know if you can tell but um, as you move it like the whole thing is just like shiny and stuff and I'm like oh I love this picture so much I mean I know it's just like a little picture of me whatever but I'm like, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. But yeah, there's that. Um, this one, let me turn it. Make sure it's in the camera thingy. Um, I just 
just drew various I shouldn't say various people because these are my family members, you know, family members and or good friends. Um, I didn't, I finished drawing it, but I didn't finish coloring it. I started on my sister, I did her hair, and then I was like, yeah, I don't feel like coloring it anymore. And, um, yeah, so, just like a cute little pen sketch of, like I said, various assorted family, my yeah, assorted family, you just throw them in a bag and shake them up, you know, you never know what you're gonna get, <laughs> yeah. so that's my sister, Yana, that's her boyfriend, Christian, I believe that's their little sister, Emma, and Christian's, yeah, Chris, yeah, that's Christian's little sister, and that's his brother, Nick, this is my other sister, um, Adana, when she had her hair cut, really cute, and of course, me, my afro, and my favorite bandana, rest in peace. I dropped the son of a bitch. And I, and I think someone came along and took it. Because it had like four of my favorite buttons on it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Got to be more careful. But yeah, there's that picture. Really cute. But I didn't like color it or anything. I just did like a quick little pen sketch. It came out okay though. It was cute. I liked it. Uh -huh. Alright, let me adjust again. Just let me let me make sure that's in frame. All right. Oh, I've actually kind of forgot about this one. Um, this one one day I was just playing around with um some of my new um, brushes I got from Wish. Um, I actually I think actually I think this picture shows up somewhat in a review of um. Oh yeah, it did. One of um the Sumi brushes that I got from Wish. And um, those brushes, um, bless them. They're those brushes. Quickly, those brushes are okay, but if you're not too perturbed at the prospect of hair like falling out of the brushes, then you know get them because they're cheap. And you know if you just needed a brush to paint with it, there you go. But if you're like not into like hair brush hair falling out of your brushes then don't get them but yeah other than that they're cool but anyway moving on just an assorted picture of eyes that I rendered um I think I, mo um one two three four five and six I did with um watercolor and um some sumi brushes and this one I did it's like a wolf's eye um I did with some Prismacolor and Faber-Castell um, pencils. Yeah, I think this one I picked up my little case of Faber-Castell little pencils and stuff like that. And those suckers really are nice. I dare say a little bit better than the Prismacolors. I mean, everyone has their picks and chooses, but and I and I still have my Prismacolors. I like when I got these, I threw those out, but no. Nah. But I kind of use them in tandem and work pretty well and I really liked how they came out so yeah just fun making eyes like an anime eye or like a like a western or regular realistic eye and I guess this is like a cross between anime and I guess comic western style whatever a crying eye and stuff like that that was really fun to make too and there's a weird little blue eye that's like shooting out stuff I don't know what that was all about and um, this page, I think I was just like testing out brushes and did like a little doodle, and, but nothing really ever came of it. So yeah. And um, oh yeah, there's a little thing where I tore out one of the pages, but I think that was the only one I tore out. But yeah, nothing too fancy schmancy on there. But yeah, I have that. And, oh, gotta turn it again. Excuse me. Open it, open anyone is um motion get motion sick behind this how you doing out there hope you're enjoying this video so far but um yeah um this one was another um like a pen and ink challenge I did for myself you know or maybe it was a challenge out there I don't know but I just I was just bored at work and I decided to challenge myself um 
This was actually inspired by one of my um, good friends on Instagram. He posted a picture of a um, really cool like woman wearing like a some like weird kimono type outfit and like one of her eyes it was in like it's basically this picture and one of the eyes she had was like really weird but the only thing that's different is like the implementation of um how I did the flowers and stuff like that and um this one was really fun to make you know this black and white ink and um showing like the contrast between white and black I guess I don't know it was really fun to make and um render that with a pentel aquash and I think a uniball signal little white pen to do the little flowers and effects and stuff like that and I gave her freckles I love giving like my characters freckles I think it's cute and charming and I'm really happy the way well, I'm happy with this whole picture um really happy with the way I've rendered the hair and how um the highlights like I was guiding the brush so you know so much like a boss that I left like these awesome little white patches or highlights and stuff like that I know I'm weird but yeah but I was like really happy the way this picture came out and this one let's see this is a picture of Kaguya Horizon, I think I said that right. Um, right, I think I said that correctly. Um, yeah, she is the final boss on the Toho 8th game, um, Imperishable Night. And, um, yeah, I love, I just love her and her theme song, um, Lunatic Princess and stuff like that. I was actually thinking of making, um, like a like a fusion between um, Princess Serenity and um, Princess Kaguya here and see how that would turn out. Um, well, I'm still am, but yeah, just another quick um, ink picture that I did. Like, I'm really, really proud of myself on how I'm like handling and doing ink and stuff because, like, a year or two ago. You would ask me like, hey CJ, you're gonna be kinda good. Well, I think I'm pretty good with ink. And I'd be like, nah, oh, you're lying. You know, I don't know what crystal ball you looking in, but I ain't using no picture and no ink. If you would have told me that, I would laugh in your face. But I guess here it is now, you know. So yeah, um Kaguya Um Horizon from Toho Project. And I always thought she was a pretty cool character. She was like really easy going, but she was like, yeah, no, I don't want the night to go away. So here, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I like her. She's a bitch, but I like her. Um, as you know, if you know me, you know me. Toho, um, I'm not very good at the Toho games, but um, I love Utsuho and Kage is like my fourth or fifth favorite in out of the whole series. But yeah, I did a quick picture of her. And I was really happy the way it turned out. I feel like how I did her hair and the hume cut and said it. That's so cute. She's so cute. Oh yeah. Let me see. Oh, I don't have to turn it. What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh my gosh, I'm doing her theme song. Uh, anyway. Ah, uh, nothing too special on this one. I uh, what was I using? Oh, spectrograph. Yeah, managed to get my hands on the spectrograph. Just a little set, and just played around with it on here. Yeah, like I said, nothing special to see. Um, but these are really fun to make, and um, I do plan on using them in my works. Let us see. Ah, another mock-up picture. I recently did a picture of two of my original characters, Enfys and Azriel, in like a little afternoon, like nap scene. I called it, was it Serene Afternoon? 
and it turned out it turned out um, to be a digital picture but it's still good to do mock-ups like I tried different poses and different angles and stuff like that and it was very close to looking like this but I ended up not doing it obviously and yeah I just chose something else I'm like I like this pose but I'm gonna try something else and so it happened but I'm really happy the way this like little mock-up little picture came about so yeah it's just my two OC's just chilling out with each other it's like looking like a little hologram tablet type thing and Osriel is and Envy's over his shoulder like messing with him and poking him and probably he's like really <laughs> I'm trying to get work done and you're just messing with him he's like of course you're my bestie I love you but yeah uh, and then I think it's like a two little pencil sketches over here and me playing around with the spectrograph spectrograph <laughs> let us move on hey so good friend on Instagram Danny Danny Santana if you don't know her get to know her because she's an awesome artist and a good great person I know that sounds weird I know people are like I understand you but that came out weird <laughs> I always talk like that I'm sorry I'm just, I'm just awkward but I participated in her art challenge was um, animal art and I do not well I didn't like drawing animals until I did this challenge and I thought it was gonna look horrible but it actually most of the pictures that I made actually turned out pretty well and it really gave a boost in my confidence on drawing animals and I planned I plan on like incorporating animals into my future works but you know I have to plan accordingly but yeah this this art challenge was something new and refreshing and I really enjoyed myself I'm really proud of myself so happy that I participated with Danny I'm happy that she created this challenge for me to participate in so I know I told her before but thank you Danny thank you so much for making up this challenge um, Let's see. Oh, day one mouse. I just did like a a cute little mouse head. And I think it was only supposed to use like, in, you can use any medium, but just like two colors out of the medium that you chose. So I ended up choosing red and blue because I was like, yeah, those are my favorite colors. Well, red is my favorite color and blue is like second place or third place. But yeah, so day one mouse. Just did a little quick pencil sketch of him. And um, day two, gorilla. I don't think I have all the animal challenges in this one. No, I, I know I don't. Because I think I finished the animal challenge in my small little sketchbook. Maybe I'll show that to you guys. But maybe not at, in this video. So, Because like I said, I'm used to like sharing my sketchbook and like talking overview well I mean I guess I'm not new to it because I've been doing reviews but believe it or not I'm still getting used to the fact that I you know listen to my voice and at first I hated it but as time moves on I found myself gradually enjoying it and not caring so much of how my voice sound and Cause it's just fun to like do reviews and edit videos and stuff I mean, it's tiring but it, it's fun it is and I like sharing stuff with you guys so yeah so what is this day two gorilla found like a really cool picture of a gorilla she was like I don't know she was like posing with like her hand over her shoulder and I thought this was really cute I was like oh I'll do that picture so yeah there it is gorilla and I think I've used um favorite Castell Polychromos with both of these pictures. Yeah, the mouse and the gorilla. Day one and day two. Thing one and thing two. Dr. Seuss. No, okay. Ah, 
got my finger on crap the paper. Oh, gotta turn it back again. Sorry, guys. But if you want to see it, I gotta look at it like this. Yeah, I gotta look at it like this. So this is day four. Yes, day four. Obviously, it's an elephant. I did not think this picture would come out so well as it did. I mean, I don't expect it to be like hung in a museum or anything. But this was really fun to make. Um, I think it was a combination between watercolors and pen. And I think I did the outline of the elephant in, um, actually with paint first, watercolor paint. Like I did like a quick little shape of him. And then I just went in with pen and like gave him his wrinkles and stuff. You know, went over it like a uni ball, white pen, white gel pen, and gave him his little sparkle sparkles. You know, he's standing in like the little grassland area, sun overhead. Yeah, I was really happy the way this picture came out, actually. I really love this. I really love this picture. My mom likes it a lot, too, for some odd reason. She likes this picture a lot. Thanks, Mom. And... Oh, the praying mantis! Day 17. Yep, everybody was cold. Okay, I'll stop. But anyway, yes, um, day 17 was praying mantis. And I thought, why don't I do, like, a cool, like... I don't know, was it like, not caricature, but it's like the, oh, the shil silhouette, somewhat silhouette of like, you know, a, a kung fu practitioner, fighter, whatever you want to call him, with like the actual kung fu mantis in the back. Yes, there's a such thing um, as an insect called a kung fu mantis. And he actually, when you, if you look on YouTube and you type it in the search bar and put in Kung Fu Mantis. There should pop up a video from the BBC Animal Planet, Air, Animal Planet, but BBC Earth. Yeah, BBC Earth. And they have like a little blurb about this guy. He's really tiny and he's red and black with like orange. And when he's like approached by a bigger predator and stuff, he will actually break out into these cool little Kung Fu like motions. And I guess it's supposed to like stun or like scare the predator away. It's like, oh gosh, what the heck is he gonna do? He's gonna whoop your ass. That's what he's gonna do. But yeah, um, Kung, Kung Fu Mantis or Prey Mantis, day 17. Yeah, I had a lot of fun making this one too. Me and my sister had a lot of laughs off of this. Yeah, I pretty much like the way I drew the mantis and rendered his wings and stuff like that. It was cool. And I got a little guy right here. They're both doing their poses. Wow. But yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm a dork. Haven't you figured that out by now? And you're still here? Ugh. I got all these upside down pictures. Gotta cut it out with that, I guess. But it makes it more exciting. Well, okay, I'll do this part first. Um, may or may not recognize this picture or you've seen it but you haven't seen it you've probably seen the pen work of this before I painted it yeah that that's what it is I after I finished like the pen work I I think I took a picture of it and uploaded it to Instagram I think and then afterwards I you know painted and this is a mock-up of a picture of my original character Osriel the picture that I'm going to make has already been lined not this one obviously I mean this one is lined but this is the one it's actually it's in my bigger book my bigger book I've lined it already but I haven't painted it yet. I haven't I haven't painted it yet so this is what it should look like when I'm done like I said it's just a mock-up like that but so far, I'm loving how everything is coming together. So, yeah, look look out for that. And now, turn it around. Turn the beat around. Okay, anyway. Day, oh, yeah, day 14. Unicorn. I just found, like, a cute little cheeky way to draw my character inference. So, yeah, day 14 was unicorn. I was like, okay, I'll draw a unicorn, all right? I drew my character, my guy, Infies, because he's like a 
unicorn well he's like humanoid unicorn thingy but person <laughs> thingy person but yeah i did that I, i'm happy the way um how i rendered the hair and did like a cool bubbly pastel like background and how i did his hair because his hair is like rainbow obviously but I, like i said i don't use like two colors so it's red and blue i'm just really happy the way that came out but yeah this that this challenge is really fun This video is going to be long. Uh, nothing too special here. I don't know. Just did. Just been drawing pincher, pinchers, pictures with ink pens as of late, and then may or may not go over with watercolors and stuff. Like I said, the um, pen works like really scratchy and loose. Which I like. I, I like. I like the way that looks, like how it came out. And um, my original character again, Osriel, with a scythe, and he has like a cloak on him. And I did like a little quick black black round background. Well, it is black, but <laughs> background to it. Him like in a cool little dynamic pose with a scythe and stuff. Oh, his booty sticking out. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't notice that before. <laughs> Oh well. Let's see, and my other boy, my other baby, Enfys, with a scythe as well. Um, this is actually showcasing one of his powers, but I don't want to get into it right now. I kind of want to keep certain things a secret. But yeah, I mean, if you guess it, you guess it, but. I don't think anyone could guess that. But yeah, just embrace with his scythe and like I said, pen work again. I know like anatomy and crap is off, but it was just something I wanted to get out of my head really quick. And I did. So there. Deal with it. <laughs> oh, let me move this out of the way. Uh do I have this the right way? I don't think I have this the right way. Nope. Because that means turn it again well I'll leave it like this for right now so another um, mock-up picture if you can't tell Reiji Utoho from Toho and I've already like explained like the look and stuff of this picture and why she looks the way she looks in this picture and if you don't know Go and watch. I actually have a speed paint of like a redraw this challenge or draw it again challenge or whatever you call it. And I go into detail on why she looks the way she looks in that in the picture. But like I said, this was just a mock-up. I ended up using what did I use for this? Watercolor and I was trying out my new Ahuhu marker. I think I'm saying that right. Ahuhu markers, Ahuhu markers. And um, I like the way this came out, but I ended up changing the pose if you see the final product of the picture. But I really like the way this came out in this book. So there it is, and there it will stay. Let's see. Ah, I don't think I I think I posted this one. I don't think I posted this one on Instagram. This is one of my my uh, uh, other characters. Her name for now, I might change it, but her name for now is Mira. And she is Enfy's aunt. I don't want to give away. I've wrote, I've written a little bit of the story, but I don't want to give it away right now. But this is Enfy's aunt, you can tell they're the the humanoid unicorn esque people because of the horn that protrudes out of her freaking forehead. But yeah, I really like the. I might change her costume. I don't know. I kind of like that gradient thing I did, and I love her hair. It's weird. It's like red with like yellow tubes. But yeah, 
It's just like double swords. I'm really happy the way this came out. It's pretty. She's pretty. Oh, okay. What am I doing? Ah, more original characters. I don't think. Maybe if you follow me on Deviant, you might have seen these. But, um, this is Envy's father. I don't think I've given him a name yet. But, yeah, this is Envy's father. You can tell, unicorn, of course. And I use watercolor for the background and markers to render skin and clothes. And I use the Ahuhu markers, and they just like went right through the paper. They like bled right through. So it's like, ah, oh, gotta be careful when I use those things on this paper. But I mean, it, I mean, it came out okay. It's just wicked. I'm like, ah. Oh. And this one. Another original character. Oh, kind of also now. This is Envy's mother, and she actually has the ability to shape. Well, maybe not shape shift, but shape shift. She can, from like bottom half of like a horse, unicorn, whatever, to like you know standing on regular human legs, two legs, whatever, and um. Yeah, this is Envy's mom. But look, she he even has he gets his freckles from his mom. But yeah. I've already like written out their little the little backstory to them and everything. It's all cute and cute. Yay. But yeah. Two of my other original characters. Ha, <laughs> nipples. I don't know why I do that, but yeah. <laughs> nipples yeah like I said the marker just zapped right through the paper so I ended up getting like a piece of cardstock and just like gluing it on because I'm like oh it's like paper space I could have utilized so I got I just got a piece of cardstock and like put it here and do something I was just I don't, I don't know what I was doing um I was trying my hand at um, no line art with like Copic mark, well Copic markers and the Ahuhu markers, and it came out and this right here was okay. But I did a um anime eye, and I really love the way this came out. It came out so pretty. But um, if you know me, and like anime and manga style art isn't really my shtick. Is that a thing? Yeah, it's not really my shtick. But I like the way this came out. I like the way it looks. And I just like garbled up the paper over here and didn't feel like doing anything with it. So, oh well, yeah. <laughs> but nothing too in depth on these papers. Just a pretty high and whatever that's supposed to be. I mean, it's a face, but yeah. Ooh. I know I think people have seen this one before this Eos one of my other original characters his name is Aurora and he's supposed to be I'm not even going to attempt to say that name but one of the um, Indian male dancers I, when I um, first created him like I love like the outfits that they wear and like all the like the gold jewelry accents and bangles and stuff and so I was like I should draw a guy character like this and I did so there he is but I, I this is like like a updated picture of him I have like a couple of pictures that are like old but most of my drawings are kind of like still in storage so I can't really show you guys that I might I might have an older picture on TV and I, I'm not sure I have to go look at it again. But yeah, lined it with pen. There's no pencil in this whatsoever. And then after I finished drawing the picture, I watercolored it in. And I'm really happy the way I did the gold in here. Like how I um, made like the light and dark parts of the gold accents throughout his outfit and stuff. And he's like long silver hair. Like the way I put like 
the shininess of his hair and stuff too. He's so pretty. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Um, another Toho character picture. This is Seija Giden. She is an Omano Jaku with the power to reverse anything or turn over anything. When I first saw this character, I thought, that's really crazy, but it was funny to me. And she's also like one of my favorite to one of my favorite Toho characters as well. Like she's always playing like tricks on the other characters. And she's actually like the mid boss to I believe not double spoiler but double dealing character I believe. I might have that wrong. And um she had her own little mini game as well. But uh, I thought she was cool and I decided to draw her. Yeah, I did this picture not too long ago. Like maybe a couple of days to like a week and a half ago. And I'm loving how it came out. I like, I'm, I'm always proud of myself how I render gold or like gold jewelry and stuff. And how I, you know, I leave just enough white for like the highlight or the shiny part of the gold, and then I render like the rest of it with like brown or like a dark orange or something, and it comes out really nice. And oh, the AC. But yeah, really, I just, you know, I got her little reversed arrow, little insignia stuff like that. I think I could have did a little better with the foreshortening on her arms, but other than that, it, I don't know, I had a lot of fun with making this picture. It came out good. I liked it. It came out great. You just see. But almost towards the end, guys. Almost towards the end. Let me just like, make sure everything's in frame or in frame as best as I can get it so we can see everything uh, 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 uh. this is part of my creative character challenge oh by the way I created a challenge if you want to participate um, go on my Instagram and you should see like the little post for what you're supposed to do but it, it's nothing crazy it's a real chill challenge nothing like you gotta just scratch your head and mull over or at least I don't think you do, you do but to each his own but if you want to participate you're more than welcome to or not whatever like I said I, I just wanted to um, do something to interact with people online and you know make cool artwork out of it so yeah create a ca uh, character number one this is the character I made uh, Vitra and Vitra is a goddess of misfortune and the first prompt is make a deity of misfortune and so I did her name is Vitra Vitra she she's not evil but she definitely has, at least in my opinion, she definitely has like an intimidating appearance with her, you know, her horns and her snake eyes and such. And she's always have like this like black ooze like always coming out of her skin. And she has like snake scales on like various parts of her body. And it's the snake scales are supposed to be like, I think this is a, a the, the rainbow snake. Like, it's jet black, but when you, like, turn the snake or when it turns its body in, like, different directions and the sun hits it in different ways, like, the scales are actually rainbow. So, I thought I would do that with the scales. Like, they're black, but they have, like, little purple and blue, red little hues of sparkliness, I guess. <laughs> um, she, uh, I thought that this was really fun to make. Like I said, she's not evil, and she actually derives her power from 
the misery of the world's people and she's actively trying to take away the misery of the world but when that happens she loses her powers and she disappears forever so I don't know if I'll ever I don't know if I'll ever keep this character or not but she's really cool I like her I like the way she came out and you see I made like a little chart and showing like the different little aesthetics and little pieces of her costume let me show this as well I don't know if you can see it because it's all black and that one you can probably see it just says feature goddess of misfortune and like two like facial expressions like I guess neutral it's like her fierce determined look and like her forlorn like somewhat sad like looking off into the distance look and I'm, happy, I'm really happy the way this came out like she's colorful but she's not like bright she has like a lot of colors going on like the only thing that's like bright on her costume or on her period is like the gold pieces and her hair which I think is like weird like contrasted against her skin it's like this magenta almost pinkish color I don't know how that happened I thought it was supposed to be more red than magenta but it's fine it's fine I still like it I like her and she even has like a snake in her hair. It's supposed to be a live snake that's always like moving and changing positions and stuff. And she has like horns. I have a thing with like making characters with horns. I don't know why. Maybe I'm horny. Get it? Oh, uh, that was a horrible, horrible, horrible joke. And I will stop. <laughs> All right. This one, these two pictures I made not too long ago, but I didn't upload them because I was like, well, I'm going to show it here on my tour. So here they are. So um, this like figure picture is just a girl. Um, she's kind of like heavy set, whatever. She has like, you know, a tray of like goodies and stuff and like fall. She's like, oh, no. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was cute. I don't know what's been going on, but the pink has been, like, showing up in my works lately. I don't know what's going on, like, because usually me and pink, pink, pink are mortal enemies, and I'm like, nope, I don't do pink, but lately, lately, guys, I don't know what's been going on. It's pink. I mean, it, I don't know, it goes with the picture. I think it goes with the picture. Like, she has on, like, this little cute made costume. <laughs> she has no problem. She has, like, big boobs like me. And, um, yeah. I thought it was just cute. She's dropping on, like, her sweets and stuff. She said, ah! <laughs> and it was just a cute little picture. I just wanted to make right quick. And I gave her, like, first. I always like giving. Ah, I love giving my characters freckles. I said that before. But that's okay. I'm shaking. I'm shaking the table. I'm too shook. I'm sorry. Let's see. This one was really fun. I don't know what came over me when I made this, but this turned out to be a lot of fun to make. All right. So here, here's the thing. I don't. I don't wear makeup. And I don't. You know what? I don't. I don't uh, like. I guess you could say think I'm better than people who wear makeup. No, I do what you do. You do what you do and I do what I do. But anyway, but I do see like like girls online or whatever, or even some guys, they'll like put on so much makeup they just end up looking like these like weird, disfigured things. And this is what came to my mind when when you know, when I see stuff, when I see people like caked on layers and layers of makeup and um I guess you could say this was like my shake at like advertising like a makeup line and it's called Poor Couture. It's probably a real thing to be honest, but like I said, I don't know. I don't wear makeup, so I'm not going to actively look it up. I know there are probably like a couple of YouTubers that does actually specialize in stuff like this, like horror makeup and stuff. I'm quite sure there's a couple of YouTubers like that. I, like I said, but I'm not actively like searching for it. But anyway. 
yeah, it's like my little ad for a makeup line or whatever. It's called For Couture, a love that never dies. And um, I meant to put over here, but it was kind of it would have been kind of small and squished, so I ended up leaving it out. But I was gonna put something like um, hot pink, so so pink it milk. She a fucking face off and thus her face is like half her face is like coming off like that and like pink and it's like dripping and ooze and stuff. Oh my god, I love that. And then this one is like make your highlights so sharp it like slices half your face off or something like that. And like I like this zombie chick over here and like her eyes like bulging and half her face like flopping off or something. And you can see her skull and like muscle tissue and stuff like that. Like oh god I love this picture. I fell in love with it. I mean I know it's mine but I still love it. But yeah it was just, it was just funny to me and I like it. I like making stuff like this. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, my fingers. My fingers. Yeah, those two pictures. Really fun to make. Really funny little stories to go along with it. Um, oh, yeah. I made this not too long ago either. This is. Actually, I didn't. I just wanted to do something cute. I just wanted to make a cute guy with like a big poofy afro. I don't know what it is about afro and space and just making them like big and poofy so it like turns into like a cute little space scape. And yeah, I, I had a lot of fun making it. It's just like a whatever picture, but I had a lot of fun making it. It's like his two like, well I'm like, like three spaces of his personality I guess and they're like you know gray tone or gray shades or whatever but i guess when he's like at his happiest his like his hair is like whoosh and it's like stars and sparkles and freckles of course freckles yay yeah it's freckles but yeah i really i really like the way this came out i might um i might scan a, some of the pictures that i haven't shown already on Instagram and upload them because in my eyes they're too awesome not to share so I definitely know this one and like two other ones are gonna go up but yeah uh, so yeah that is well I haven't actually finished the sketchbook yet so what I decided to do was just show a little bit of a assorted pictures, but that is, I mean, it's pretty much done. I just have like a couple more pages to go. Like, look, it's not even that much. It's just this little part. But I'm, I'm pretty happy the way the sketchbook is coming along all together. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. So, I'll go ahead and try to wrap up this video because it's already long enough. I'm just gonna show you guys like two or three more like assorted pictures and then I'll leave you guys alone. <laughs> and you're probably like, oh my god, so freaking mini. Alrighty. Uh, if I can get that in the frame, it's probably cut off a little bit, but it's okay because I think I think most people have seen this already. It's my Batman. My per day Batman. Um <laughs> Yeah, he's very freaking pretty. I don't know why I wanted him like this pretty. I just want, I, I mean, well, I know why I wanted because I just wanted a pretty Batman, but yeah. I did this with the, uh, oh my gosh, the the paints that are like, the, the name's not really hard to announce. It just, I can't think of it. It's like the Gombe watercolor paints or something like that. If you know what I'm talking about, just comment down in the comment section. But I use that and some gold paint to access, um, well, I sent his, like, insignia on his chest and stuff like that. I'm actually really happy the way this came out, but yeah, he's so pretty. He has, like, floppy hair. Floppy sort of hair and stuff. <laughs> the pretty Batman. Party. 
And then, I think, I think you have seen this one as well. This is my character sheet for another one of my original characters. I believe I'd, I didn't have a name for him at the time, but when I went to Tallahassee comic book convention, um, person saw this and I told them like the, the backstory and how I came up with this character. So, okay, that's right. So this character is a cross between, um, the African god Inshu, African trickster god, I think that's West Africa, Yoruba tribe, Yoruba people, I believe. I think I got that right. So, African trickster god Inshu, and Tengu and Oni monsters from Japanese mythology. And I showed this picture to a person at the convention and I told him I said I have no idea what to name him I mean I love him I still do obviously but I have no idea what to name him and I told them his little backstory and they came up with the name of in Inshu Oni that way it could keep both elements of the African part and the Japanese part Inshu obviously the name of the trickster god and Oni of the name of one of the mythological beasts or monsters from Japanese mythology and I, I don't know I like I like the name so and there it is that's his name Inshu Oni that's his name and instead he has like one of those big I, th I think they're called morning stars the big you know hammer like thing with like the spikes on the side well, maybe it's not a morning star but you get the picture morning star and instead of like the no mask he has like the african like tribal like mask i think it's like three of them here yeah and i just came up with like different looks for him i mean the horns pretty much stay in the same place it's just a different color from here i think i'm gonna keep the skin color and how i did like the tattoos and stuff on him the same like the red with the silver and white tattoos but change his hair from this to this because I just like like the little braid and the flowers in the hair and stuff like that and then of course he has like African like jewelry on and then also like I guess you could say Japanese like what the Tengu or the Oni monsters would wear like the big beaded necklaces or ropes and the spike bracelets and stuff. I don't know, I'm just really happy the way this came out. Yeah, ain't you only? Ah. Oh yeah, I put like little gold accents on them too as well. Cause like those little baby demon eyes. You looking at me with those big old eyes. <laughs> and then last, but certainly not least, this little bit I did not too long ago. This is, actually not my character this is my good friend uh, Marcus character he makes such really to me he does he makes us really interesting characters this is a Hugo and very well now that I look at it very heavily inspired by Storm of the X-Men because that's his favorite Marvel superhero I think that's his favorite superhero of all time period so yeah he um, I remember when he first drew Ahiga, and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I gotta draw, I gotta draw him, I gotta draw him, please let me draw him, and so I did, and we were actually supposed to make a book, but I moved, and he got another job, and I mean, we still talk, we're still friends, but obviously we don't have the time to do that, maybe in the future, I don't know, but yeah, so this is, like I said, this is Ahiga, had a real... A lot of fun drawing this. I believe I did this with, I sketched it out with pen. Oh, like, girl, what you been doing? You've been like doing the damn thing with the pen. Sketched it out with pen and then I colored it with um, marker, um, hula markers. And then I just did like some little ink 
spray around and stuff. I think I didn't do so well on the hair, like how it looked, but but it turned out okay. I mean, it turned out great, to be honest. I love how I rendered the gold as well. I'm, like, I'm just loving how I'm rendering gold, either with marker or watercolor. Like, I'm always on point when I'm rendering gold. Get it, girl. Yes. And actually, this picture is like, as of late, this is the most liked picture on my Instagram account as of today. I think it has like 40... 40 or 41 likes so far like the love y'all been giving me and not just this picture just me in general it's just been crazy and I appreciate it but yeah that's a hiccup that's about that's it yeah no that's not about it is it's it that's it I am done with the tour I hope you enjoyed everything you've seen. I know this video is long and it has like a lot of ands and ums in it. I'm sorry, I don't have a speech coach and I'm not a professional, so it's either you watch it or you don't. I guess if you want to watch it and you just don't want to hear my voice, put it on me. I don't know. But I had a lot of fun making this video. I definitely want to make more like this it's got to fill up more sketchbooks hey mission accepted <laughs> anyway but like i said i hope you enjoyed this video this was a blast to make um showing my current works to you guys i hope you stay with me to the bitter bitter end and yeah i just like like i said i hope you guys enjoy Peace and love to one and all. See you on the next video. Bye. Bye.